All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to save this image, which I actually have already saved, I think, not as index.htm, but as peaches.jpg. And then I'm going to go to Illustrator and show you how to trace this with the tracing tools in Illustrator. So I'm going to create a space to place this on. I'm going to move this popsicle shape out of the way and do file place. Placing the peaches, not pasting them. They have to be placed. And I am recording this. So now it's placed. And if you click and drag, you'll make the pattern or the shape the type, the, the size you want it. So I might want it maybe a little bigger than I think it will, that will look good as a starter. And now it's sitting here and it's ready actually right away to be image traced. It's still selected. I just placed it. It's still selected. And up here we see the setting called image trace, and that is not the right settings. So I'm going to undo Command Z. Because I find it a very helpful panel, I will go to the image trace panel. This panel lets me set the preset initially for however many colors I want in this tracing. And I'm going to set it at six colors and make sure it's a color, and then that's what it does. So not enough colors. So uh, if you're very careful, you can set this up a little at a time and then wait. Sometimes it, it depends on your computer. It may not repaint it. You can click preview off and then preview on, and sometimes that'll repaint it. I don't know. It doesn't look any different to me, maybe ever so slightly. So 14 colors. I might as well at this point use the preset, which was 16 colors. So that's starting to look like more like a peach. So just curious, here's 22 questions, questions, colors. <sighs> There's 22 colors. All right, that looks like a peach, right? So there it is. I love it. It's fabulous. That's the first one. I'm going to take this to keep it or make it into a swatch for filling, but before I do that, I'm actually going to create a rectangle behind it. First I'll draw the rectangle, then I will change the color and make it a peach color, which I have no idea what that is right now, although I have a peach right here. Let me look at my reference. It is real life. I think it's red, but Honestly, I don't think people really think peaches and red. So I'll just make it a little more red. So that's my peach color. I'm going to cut that and paste it and paste it behind these peaches. So I'll select them and Command B. So issue here is that I have a white background. If I click on the traced art, that is what I just clicked on, and I choose Object and then Expand, boom. I'm expanding the fill and the stroke, yes, click OK, and then I should be able to actually click on the white and delete it. That's better, okay. All right, so maybe that's not the right color for the background, maybe I just want it to be more yellow, so I'll adjust that color till I'm happy with it. It's disgusting, I hate it. It's just like the worst color. Better, it looks like pukey green. All right, so maybe that will work, okay. Whatever area I have right now floating around this set of peaches will be part of the pattern if I click and drag and then go into the swatches panel, the regular old swatches panel. And if I set this as thumbnails and click and drag this into the swatches panel, it should make a pattern. And it did. It just put the little pattern right there. Okay. Now, for kicks and giggles, I will select this popsicle shape and choose this yellow color, and then click on the peaches. However, the peaches pattern is not looking like it's so good for being peaches, so I'm going to go pattern options, and this gets very exciting because here in the pattern options panel, I can change some of the controls of how my peaches look. When I am selected on here, I have a flyout, I have edit pattern. 
and now my pattern right now seems like it's completely freaked out, like it's all over the page. What the heck? Don't want it to be doing that. I want it to be to be smaller. So here I'll change this from 193 and I want to keep the proportions linked. So from 193, I don't know, I'll just guess uh, to 90. And now the pattern is tweaked. And if I notice up here at the top, I'm inside of the pattern swatch. So I'm actually editing inside of the swatch right now. I know that's confusing, but that's what happened when I filled the whole page. So if I go back here, uh, it's not really filling properly at all. So I'm going to undo a couple steps. Actually, just go back to here and select this whole kit and caboodle and see what happens if I make the box smaller and scale, maybe not that small, and scale the peaches artwork itself. So I'll select this. It is not a pattern. It's what I made the pattern from. And maybe just scale it that big. And then again, drop it in the palette. Now I know the second one is the one I want. Click and fill. Okay, it's starting to feel more possibly like peach filling. It's peach filling. So here I can make this smaller. Make the box smaller. It's this gap around the edges that I'm not digging. So I'm trying to make this just fit around here. And each time I adjust this, I'll create a new swatch for patterns. And in fact, if I go to my thumbnail view, I'll do large thumbnail view so I can see. There's the three different peach swatches. Select the object. Ooh, ah. I believe also I can click on this and move the object so that I get it filling the way I want. And finally, once I have it, because if I start moving it around here, I don't really want the objects to keep moving around inside the, the bar. I have to do this. Select and choose Object Expand. And what this is going to do is turn this not into the pattern anymore, but they should actually be their own objects. So when I move it, notice how it's now no longer attached to the pattern. It's now its own thing. That is a strange concept because when you work with patterns in Illustrator, what is actually going on is that it's applying. Illustrator is applying the pattern to the whole page. And it's almost as if, if you notice, if you put two rectangles next to each other, the pattern is hiding inside the page. It's such a strange phenomenon when you're not really aware of what it's doing. So if I have the pattern inside of a shape and I move the shape, which is what I'm doing here, you notice that I'm not actually seeming to keep the pattern in the same position inside this rectangle. The position of the peaches seems to be changing. It's not changing. It's just not holding it. So in order to have this, have this exact positioning of the peaches in this pattern so that I could move this around the page and have it do what I want, it's object expand. And then when I move this, it's connected to just that rectangle. So there's my peaches. That's great. I'll come over here now and see if I can do the same thing with the strawberry. Okay, so here's my... I'm going to go with this sort of more photographic looking one. And control C to save the image as. And berries and save and flip over to Illustrator and file place and I want my berries and place. All right, way too big. Command Z. File place. So again, if I click and drag, 
I can get them more similar in size. So I'll scale them and then have image trace, same settings as I used a moment again, a moment ago, which will be color 16. Should look somewhat different. It looks pretty good. Maybe too detailed. Maybe these two things are not similar enough in style. I would probably try to get, bless you, things in terms of the artwork more stylistically similar. Maybe if I make this less colors, it'll be better and have a more soft tonality to it instead of this highlight situation that it's very strong. So I'll bring it down again, see what happens. Hey, that one's pretty good because it even gave me a pink background. So I'm excited about that. So I'm going to click and choose to drag it into the swatches panel. And then here if I essentially just duplicated this and use this, I have nothing, nothing at all. There it goes. Strawberries. Okay. So now you've got the same thing you need to do here which is object expand and now it's expanded so that if I want to move this one it's a lot of a lot of points that it's expanding so the point being now each one of these elements can be moved or tweaked on its own and I think that's going to take another moment or two to expand. Hopefully we're almost there. And that is how I might try to use some existing clip art to make a pattern to fill a shape. Okay, so I'm waiting for that to expand there. It has a lot of small shapes to expand to. And once that's done, I can compose a little better with these things. I would probably also add just a very minor detail of the popsicle stick and group that to the popsicle and once that is done I can then move the individual popsicles around and rotate them etc. Okay while that's cooking um, I'm gonna pause this here